Hey up peeps, HP Reverb G2 round 2. I made a bit of a mistake in the last video. Get real! Okay guys and girls, well, as I said in, earlier in the video, I am, I've made a bit of a mistake. Um, sort of. What happened was, I watched a video by Carl Gosling. Go and watch his channel, very, very good. Very informative stuff that he comes out with. But... Basically, the, his discussion was about barrel distortion in VR. Now, he was talking about the HP Reverb G2, uh, about the, the default settings when you first plug these in on Steam VR is 3146 by 3096 as the resolution pair I. Now, we know from the stats from this machine, it should be 2160 by 2160. Now, you can't select that as an option. Now, in my last video, I showed you I dropped it down to 50%. To try and get the best out of it and it worked it did work for me but the quality wasn't brilliant it was better than what i was used to with the rift s or um, even the quest 2 to be honest but it was still um wasn't up to what this machine can actually do this headset can actually do so if you watch carl's video you'll tell he'll talk all about what um barrel the the barrel distortion is on um he uh, headsets anyway and how it reflects to true resolution inside the headset as long as you leave it to the default settings in Steam. So, what I ended up doing is putting back to 100% again. And if you remember in my previous video, I was showing you how to set motion smoothing on inside the Windows um, Mixed Reality Portal settings within Steam VR, um, which is the uh, this app here which is that one there so Windows reality mixed reality for Steam VR the settings within that to set it to um, turn on motion smoothing so as long as that's switched on you can go into your games and it will run at resolution this height this resolution and you may need to change obviously the settings within the game to get it to run smoothly now I have a very overclocked i7 and a very overclocked um, uh, NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. Now, with this settings, I can actually run my favourite game, my favourite driving game at the moment, Automobilista 2, um, in ultra settings um, for the majority of things. I'll show you my settings in a minute. Um, and run extremely smoothly. Obviously, the motion smoothing is turned on, so that means it drops down to 45 hertz and then has some rather magic effect to get it running at 90 hertz in headset. But I've got to say, it looks beautiful and it runs extremely well. So I'll just show you my settings. Okay, so I'm in Automobilista 2, and let's go into the settings and show you what I've got in here. So, as I said, I've got the resolution in Steam VR set for this headset at default resolution, 100%, <clears throat> with motion smoothing switched on. Now, for performance, which is where you set everything, now, I've got resolution there, 1920 by 1080. When, with, for some reason, with Windows Mixed Reality in this game, it won't let me output to the screen anything higher than that, which makes no difference to me because, especially when I'm streaming here, I only stream at 1080p anyway. Um, so what I've got, full screen, high, <clears throat> anastropic filtering down to uh, eight times. And now I turn the MSAA from high down to medium because to be honest with the resolution of this headset, it wasn't really needed. I've got reflections on super, on ultra, environment ultra, track detail on ultra with car detail as well. These are the, them two are important for me. I want the cars to be looking gorgeous and the track to be as gorgeous as ever. Now, as you can see, I've got shadow detail down to low. Now, this is the biggest, one of the biggest impacts in virtual reality games anyway, is the, is the shadows. Now, yes, in the Rift S, I had everything on Ultra with no problems whatsoever, but obviously this is pushing 4K to a headset. Um, now, turning the shadow detail down to low in this game honestly doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, the, the jaggies inside VR are pretty bad anyway inside um, the... Um, madness engine but to turn it down to low and I honestly didn't notice any difference to be honest um, 
I don't have motion blur on, doesn't really work. I've got detailed grass down to low as well. I'm not interested in the grass. Uh, I ain't, certainly ain't smoking it, so let's leave it alone. Particle level is set to high, and my particle density is still set to ultra, so there's still very high settings there. And if I go back to the visual effects as well, I've got everything switched on there because I love pretty graphics. And inside the game itself, let's go to a race. I'll go tell you what, we'll stick on Alton Park. Again, um, I'm going for a 10 lap race. Let's just do a one lap here, five o'clock in the morning. So we've got the nice reflections coming through on the screen. Um, and obviously you can't see what I see because <laughs> I'm inside the virtual reality. You're going to see the stream and it's going to be at 1080p. I'm seeing 4K. So I'm going to go straight into the game and show you a quick lap and how pretty it looks. <clears throat> See Nemesis has still got the world record around there. Swine. So let's give this a go. Okay, so we're on the grid at Alton Park International Circuit. It's uh, early hours in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. 5.02 to be precise. And let's show you, well, actually, no, I can't show you what this really looks like because what you're seeing is 1080p representation of what I'm seeing through the headset. Now the headset is obviously pushing 4K and I have got motion smoothing on I, and it, it's running absolutely beautifully with them settings I showed you. Now obviously this is down on down to the specs of my machine. Now if I wanted to, to run this at 90 frames per second through 90 frames per second I would have to drop the super sampling down in Steam VR to around about 50% and change the settings again inside the game to lower the details and things like that but as I've always said I'm a graphics whore I love pretty things and this game looks absolutely stunning. Now, as you noticed as well, maybe, is that I am, I'm not running a full grid. I'm just running a default grid that Automobilista uh, shows by default, which is the 15 cars, well, 16 cars on track, including you! Oh! Nice bit of uh, work by the, bit, by the uh, AI there. Um, so, I do need to give it a go with uh, a full grid. But um, this is running fine. Obviously, I need to may need to change this uh, settings a bit more if I'm pushing rain or thunderstorms and things like that. Um, but um, generally, we all like to race in nice sunshine like this. So there you go. If you want to get the most out of your HP Reverb G2 in Automobilista 2, I suggest leaving it to 100% settings if you've got the power to run it hundred percent that is leave motion set moving on and just see how you get on and just turn the settings down in game to what you, what you prefer if you want to try and get the frame rates or if you're really pushing it with your hardware reduce the super sampling or worst case scenario go and spend 1700 pounds on a 3090 graphics card and even then from what I've seen so far you would still have to reduce theme super sampling to around about 60% to get true 90 frames per second out of this even this game which is well optimized for VR if you're looking at other games like Half-Life Alex and things like that no problem whatsoever, them games look, work, work extremely well, it's just uh, sim racing titles are renowned for being hogs on your resources. But there you go, Alton Park on HP Reverb G2 at 100% resolution
and running extremely fine on my machine. Come on team, change the tyres. There you go guys, I hope that's been uh, helpful for some. If it has and you want to see more of this content, hit the like and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. See ya.